Most types of preferences can be represented by a utility function. Let's have a look at this simple case when we have two goods and they are perfect substitutes. Let's begin with the case when the consumer is willing to substitute them in a one-to-one -one ratio. The consumer now only cares about the total quantity that she has of good one and good two, and not at all if this quantity is composed mostly of good one or mostly of good two. Indifference curves are straight lines like this with a slope of minus one. For this particular indifference curve, the total quantity of good one and good two is equal to 20 for any bundle on this indifference curve. I have only drawn one indifference curve, but in fact there are an infinite number of them, all straight lines with a slope of minus one. So how do we construct an ordinal utility function from these preferences? Well, the important thing is that the utility for all bundles along this indifference curve to be equal. The same must hold for all bundles along any other indifference curve. And the utility must be higher if you go to an indifference curve further out. So how can we do that? Well, here is one way of doing it. And this is probably the simplest one. We define a utility function as a function of my bundle to be the sum of the quantities. This will work because the sum of the quantities along this indifference curve is constant. So the utility is simply equal to the total quantity of good one and good two. This particular indifference curve is associated with the utility of 20. So here u of x1, x2 is equal to 20 or we can write this again, x1 plus x2 is equal to 20. This is an implicit relationship between x1 and x2. I can easily make it explicit by moving x1 over to the other side, and that will give me x2 is equal to 20 minus x1. This is the explicit relationship. And this is indeed the equation of this straight line x2 is equal to 20 minus x1. We can see that the intercept is 20, the way we want it to be, and we can see that the slope is equal to minus 1, which is also what we need for an indifference curve representing perfect substitutes. But keep in mind that this is just one possibility of representing these preferences. Any monotonic transformation of this utility function will work equally well. For example, the utility function v, x1, x2, which is four times u, just making up a number here, this one will be 4x1 plus 4x2. This utility function will represent exactly the same preferences. An indifference curve for this utility function v would be 4x1 plus 4x2 is equal to some utility level v. Move 4x1 over to the other side and divide by 4 and we have x2 is equal to v over 4 minus x1. So this indifference curve is a level curve of v. v of x1, x2 equal to 4 times 20 or 80. Same preferences represented by two different utility functions. Well, how about the case when we have two goods that are perfect substitutes, but the consumer is willing to substitute one for the other, but not in a one-to-one -one ratio. Here is an example, MRS in this case, the slope of this indifference curve is everywhere minus 20 divided by 30 or minus two over three. The consumer is willing to trade one unit of good one for two third units of good two, or if you like, three units of good one for two units of good two. So which utility function will give you these preferences? There are many ways of coming up with an answer. Here is just one possibility. We can see that the equation of this particular indifference curve is x2 is 20, 
that's the intercept. It's a straight line with slope minus two thirds, so minus two thirds x1. All bundles on this indifference curve will satisfy this relation. Let's multiply both sides by three to get rid of the fraction. Then we have three x2 equal to 60 minus two x1. Let's move two x1 over to the other side. Then we have two x1 plus three x2 equal to 60. This is the implicit relationship that x1 and x2 must satisfy in order for the bundle to be on the indifference curve. If you consider another indifference curve, then this 20 here will be another number, but bundles on another indifference curve must still satisfy an implicit relationship 2x1 plus 3x2 equal to some number here which will be different for different indifference curves. So if we pick this to be our utility function, u of x1, x2 equal to 2x1 plus 3x2, then level curves of this function will all be straight lines with a slope of minus two over three. The drawn indifference curve is the level curve for u equal to 60. The level curve or indifference curve for u equal to 30 will look something like this. So you can see that no matter what the MRS is, that is no matter what the constant rate of substitution is between good one and good two, let's just call them arbitrary numbers A and B, can be represented by the utility function U as a function of X1 and X2 equal to A x1 plus b x2. With this utility function, a level curve is a x1 plus b x2 equal to some utility level u. Make it explicit in x2, you see that this is u over b minus a over b x1. And the indifference curve has a slope of minus a over b, which is precisely what we wanted. Here is a summary of this important result. Two goods that are perfect substitutes with a one-to-one -one rate of substitution can be represented by the simple utility function u is equal to x1 plus x2. Any monotonic transformation of this utility function will also be a representation of these preferences. If we have perfect substitutes with a rate of substitution that is not one-to-one, then such preferences can always be represented by a linear utility function u is equal to ax1 plus bx2. The marginal rate of substitution MRS for such a utility function will be equal to minus a divided by b. One unit of good one is equivalent to a over b units of good two, which is the same as saying that b units of good one is equivalent to a units of good two. For example, if one unit of good one is equivalent to two units of good two, then MRS is minus two, and we can pick, for example, A equal to two and B equal to one, and represent these preferences with the utility function U is equal to two X one plus X two. An additional unit of good one will then increase our utility exactly as much as two additional units of good two.